So two weeks ago, when the snow out here was still two to three feet deep, I, uh, I did a video about our swale system here, uh, and I had to dig holes down to show you how the water started moving. Uh, it's two weeks later. Uh, the melt is really on right now, <clears throat> and uh, we've just gone uh, yeah, 36 hours without a freeze. It's been freezing and thawing. We're doing maple sugar up here right now. So we got serious melt going on. It's 57 degrees right now, and uh, it was 42 overnight. So just really quick, here's, uh, here's the top swale that catches this hillside. This goes all the way around the top over to where the driveway is. Uh, and, and like I said, this was all under two to three feet of snow two weeks ago. Here you can see there's standing water kind of overflowing a little bit here, which is kind of what you'd expect it to do with such a severe melt going on. Here you can see it's running down this way to uh, the second swale. We have our swales are in here for uh, we do grazing and so our paddocks are set up along the swales uh, there's they're meant to overflow into each other if there's big events you know, like eight inches of rain in an hour, in an hour or this snow melt so you can see here uh, because of the way we catch the rain and spread it out it just kind of cascades down instead of being in a ephemeral stream or river which slows it down and makes it easier to catch Here's the uh, second swale down here, which you can see is full. And there's a few points where, here's a low point again, where it's just kind of cascading over, pretty slow, not, uh, not eroding anything at all. Uh, and then there's the, the far bottom swale, so it's three swales the water's going through here. Uh, and it's starting to pool up a little bit in the in the corner down there. Now, one thing you got to understand about that, we were just walking down there uh, about an hour ago. Uh, this time of year, when this melt off is going, the uh, in the past before the swales, the water and slush would be you know anywhere from 18 inches to two feet deep. Uh, right now, where we were standing there today, it's it's just six inches of water, so we're catching a lot of it, and. Uh, soaking it in and then when you get over uh, this way this is where you really begin to s we're heading towards the the uh, key point of this whole system here and uh, it's just totally working it's cool uh, you can see uh, where that V is down there that's the low point of the valley, and so your swales go off to the left and right, uh, basically on a contour uh, to spread the water out again, and pocket ponds at the end, uh, and then it soaks in instead of running off. Uh, in this area right here, this is really kind of the most water we've seen coming through here. It's been an exceptional uh, winter for snow because it was so cold uh, it just didn't melt it just piled up and now it's going really quickly you all know about flooding all over the midsection of the United States uh, we feel like we're in pretty good control of this here so this is where our focal point was when we did the surveying put it in this is the low point you can see here again goes off to the left goes off to the right uh, there's a ditch and a berm and woody perennials planted and then this winds the, the what used to be the ephemeral stream that went straight down here to the other one down there it just it just was a torrent uh, and we don't have torrent right now uh, this swale here, again, you see here, is just gently cascading across uh, this this area that the steers are grazing. So there's plenty of grass in here, plenty of roots. 
this swale here, we put this in and it's just kind of a spur that goes into uh, the ditch by the road. See here that there's a lot of water running through here right now, but that doesn't even tell half the story because we put this in to keep water from going through the the barns over there and there's some water going through there but not all of this uh, what I'm going to take you over here to see is that as I'm coming towards uh, the road and the property across the street uh, that's land that's in CRP and has been for uh, a number of years so we don't have to worry about any chemicals being in here or just anything awful uh, but what we what we did here when we put this swale in we weren't quite sure what we were you know that it was going to turn out this way that's why we didn't notice at first that there's a culvert that goes under the road here and comes through here and culverts on the other side here and if if you take a look over here uh, we're probably draining a good 20 acres or more of runoff from Thelma's place over here through this culvert and into our system. So we are moving a massive amount of, of uh, runoff uh, through our swales and it's still for the most part handling it. I mean th this, this is kind of astonishing right here. Um, so yeah when we put this spur in to keep water out of uh, the barns, we ended up feeding another another 20 plus acres of of uh, rain collection, snow collection into our system here. Uh, we kind of like that. Most people, when they're thinking about land usage and water. They're putting in drain tiles and sending water downhill to the next place so they can plant some more ground. Uh, and so they're actually getting rid of water, which is a really important resource to have. Uh, we looked uphill instead of downhill. And so instead of sending water away that we didn't want, we started collecting all the water that we could and sending it through uh, our pasture here. So this here is where we do bale grazing. Uh, if you've seen this, I'm going to post, post this as uh, runoff part two. So you can check it out two weeks ago when, when uh, I had to dig down through uh, literally two feet of snow to get to where the water was moving to show people, yeah, it's it's on the move. Uh, but it's it's handling it. It's doing exactly what it should. I just went to a uh, a, a farmer-led watershed management uh, meeting this morning because uh, farmers have a lot to do with protecting waterways uh, because of up some of the stuff we do. I mean, you look around here and you can see there's manure uh, all over our pastures because of bale grazing. And, uh, you know, if we weren't catching this as much as we are, it'd be running down into uh, Devil's Marsh, which is in the woods, and then down through our property in the back to the Straight River to Big Round Lake. Uh, and we're, we're slowing it down, we're catching it, we're sinking it in. We are getting 
you know, some of it's overflowing right now, but I, I'm not going to beat myself up about that because this runoff has been exceptional uh, this year. It's been crazy. Uh, but we're still catching most of it uh, under extraordinary conditions. So, yeah. This is, uh, uh, that's probably a better to get over here. This is how we've been handling water management uh, on our farm. We learned this from uh, Mark Shepard uh, in his book, Restoration and Agriculture. Uh, went to a workshop with him at a friend's farm a few years ago. Uh, went through theory and practice with laser levels and a bulldozer. Decided, yeah, we can do this too. We did it with just a transit and a three bottom plow. Uh, put all our stuff in uh, and uh, it's for these big wa big water events both runoff like this and then um, you know with cl climate change we're getting uh, these uh, heavier storms dumping a lot of water real fast and in the summertime we get six inches of rain in an hour it, it catches everything it doesn't doesn't go anywhere so, uh, yeah, here it is. Um, the good news over here is uh, in the past two weeks, it's been freezing and thawing. So I've been out here monitoring the swales and they, they have not really been overflowing until uh, today. And here's where we did uh, part of our bale grazing. There's the boys doing a thing over there. We've got a little more time to feed them some hay before everything starts coming up. You can see, you know, they've left a lot of manure here and uh, hay, you know, it's left. And uh, as I was monitoring this, uh, it was running down the side of this as, as uh, manure tea. Uh, and we caught it all with a swale down here. Now this is this is mostly like slowed down to almost a stop. So we prevented most of that from running off. Uh, this is overflowing here from uh, a swale that goes. That's uh, our, our, our totally bottom swale. Uh, this is the low point. So it's going from here into. Uh, Devil's Marsh here, but uh, I think we prevented quite a bit of, of manure tea from heading into this with uh, with what we've done here. So, so that's pretty much a follow-up on uh, how we're managing uh, water up here at uh, Anathoth Community Farm in northern Wisconsin. Um, I think that's all I want to show you as a, as a follow-up. Seriously, right, like right here, I was walking through uh, snow up to my hips just two weeks ago. Uh, and this is, this is like St. Paul, Minnesota's uh, Harriet Islands underwater. Uh, other places are like in danger. You know, I have to tell you about Nebraska, Iowa. Uh, so, uh, this is kind of how we do it. And uh, I'll show you, this is the, the bottom end of the valley again. So, uh, it goes through the top swale and then down into here. And again, by the time it gets down here, it's just running pretty gently. And then it hits this swale, gets spread out to the left and right. And it's all about slowing it down and soaking it in and uh, planting woody, woody perennials on the uh, berm below the ditch, uh, taking advantage of the zone of water that kind of happens underneath there to, uh, to grow fruit and nut trees and shrubs. And that's kind of what we're doing here. So, uh, 
Didn't have to dig through any snow for this one. It's all uh, right out in front. Uh, that's it. Have a great day. If you got any questions? Uh, comment on the uh, on the on the YouTube page. And um, have a good day. That's it.